Welcome to another edition of the Courtroom of Public Opinion. My name is John Singletary. I want to thank you for joining in and I would like for you to subscribe to this channel. Also sign on to www.jfrinc.org and join as a member. It's $36 a year. First topic today is the Charleston County School Board accepted the resignation of Dr. McGinley. The title of this one is White backlash. Now, Dr. McGinley, who had been with Charleston County probably the longest of all of the superintendents, I think she's been there for about 10 years, uh, apparently what happened was there was at the academic magnet a situation where something derogatory to the black community um, was done by the football players in that they would smash watermelons and then make monkey sounds. Uh, and they did this as they uh, played the, uh, after one of the games when they won against one of the, the black schools. Um, community, community was outraged and as a result, uh, the decision was made to let the coach go. After that, um, the coach was brought back by Dr. McGinley um, and as a result, the community, the white community then wanted her resignation. Uh, or had a meeting to see whether or not they would actually allow her to continue to fire her or accept the resignation. They accepted the resignation. Um, sad situation, but simple. This is what happens when someone of power who is white uh, happens to step in and try and assist with giving justice to the black community, at least in Charleston County. She had the power to let the coach go for his derogatory actions or allowing the, the, the football team to continue with those derogatory actions and as a result uh, she was ostracized. Uh, we have to remember that uh, even during slavery, uh, the lynchings, uh, a third of the lynchings, uh, about 1,300 of them in the United States, were actually white people who were seen as those helping blacks. Now, they've gone from a physical lynching now to a professional lynching in that her career, at least in Charleston County, is now gone. I'm going to read this short segment here that came in. All right, it says, Dr. McGinley, white backlash against whites who try to help blacks. I guess her northern education left her blind to the fact that in the South, lynchings of professional careers and rights of civil protections have replaced the physical lynchings of yesterday. Whites can still be professionally lynched for helping blacks in South Carolina. Over 1,300 whites were lynched in America and hung by the neck until dead for helping blacks, about a third of the record lynchings. Of course, the whole thing has to do with white supremacy and the notion that you, Dr. McGinley, dared to release our white coach because he insulted some blacks. We have, where have you been? We will show you first we will make you hire him back, our white coach. Then we will fire you because you have gotten your views twisted. Now, that's a heck of a statement to make, but it's the truth of the matter. And as a result, um, she was let go. I can say it's the truth of the matter simply because I recently had a case against Wells Fargo and there were several judges who along the same white supremacy line, uh, what they did was they allowed Wells Fargo to make the statement through its attorney 
I had Hainsworth Sinclair and Boyd, Matt McQuillan there. Wells Fargo loves to hate niggers and hate to love niggers. Now, the judges who were involved were um, Judge Roger Young, Judge Michael Scarborough, Mikhail Scarborough, Judge J.C. Nicholson, Judge Robert Carr, Judge Bruce Hendricks Howe, Judge David Norton, Judge Richard Gurgle, all who were connected with the um, Singletary versus Wells Fargo case where they made that statement that Wells Fargo loves to hate niggers and hate to love niggers and neither of the judges saw fit to uh, address the issue when it was brought up that what Wells Fargo was doing was racism. Um, that is the backdrop in which we have to exist here in South Carolina on many occasions. Uh, the letter goes on to say that Dr. McGinley, he is the quagmire. You did the right thing when you fired the coach, but you should have stood your ground and not jumped back over the fence to hire him back. That's the work of politicians who play games trying to get votes, but it's no good for trench fighting for justice. Simply put, you were fired because you dared to reprimand a white man because he insulted the black community and the white backlash was to give a public professional lynching to make a statement of control to the world through you and that the white power will not tolerate whites being reprimanded for insulting and trampling on the rights of non-whites being reprimanded and not trampling on the rights of non-whites we didn't care what they did and it's all right or we will make it right. The African American community should have been upset with this when they rehired the coach. And that should have been the issue. It goes on to say, a white with the power to help a black and who was willing to do so, you see the fight to keep him fired would have been fierce. But the white power would have needed you more to rehire him and would not have gotten rid of you the way they did, you made it easy for them to fire you by rehiring him. That's one heck of a statement to make. In the fight for equality and for justice, you must stand your ground. You simply cannot jump back and forth across the fence. Once you have made the decision to stand for justice, it is a lifelong commitment in the South. To jump back and forth is not only dangerous, but it is the end of a career. Now, Dr. McGill, we'd like to thank you for your service and for the gains that you brought to Charleston County school system. Many were made. Everything was not perfect, but of course it wasn't perfect when you got here. I think that, as you are well aware, it's best for you to simply cut your losses and move on. Simply because the spotted hyenas that are here in South Carolina will literally turn on you and eat you up, as you've already found out. Now, in terms of actions, since this is the courtroom of public opinion, the black community should be outraged and it should express its displeasure in the fact that they took the interim superintendent, Dr. Heron, and refused to allow her to step into the position of acting superintendent. They took someone who did not have a doctoral degree in education, someone who was not close to the decisions being made on a day-to-day -day basis, someone out of finance, who happens to be a white male, to put that person over the black female to run the school system. That is what the black community should be outraged about. And of course, they should express that. They should express that by contacting the school board to let them know that this is why it is almost impossible to trust what the school board does in the interest of the black community. This statement is worse than what they did in firing Dr. McGinley. 
if Dr. Herring is good enough to be the assistant superintendent, then certainly she has the credentials to be the superintendent. How would it look for something to happen where the president no longer holds the office, and they skip the vice president and take a look at someone out of uh, budget and control or somewhere else to deal with to deal with the situation. That would be a slap in the face. So, the action item is that the black community needs to come together, and they need to express their displeasure to the Charleston County School District, and not allowing are placing anyone other than Dr. Herring as the acting superintendent. This has been another edition of the Courtroom Public Opinion. See you next time.